Well, I was trying to do something that would have been fun, didn't work. Testing out the new studio, testing out StreamYard software, learning more about how this works. Thought I'd be coming to you live today from the big studio, but then remembered I had some tests I had to do over here. So just tried to make it work, but it didn't work. But that's okay that it didn't work because this does work and we're about to have a big show, whether that worked or didn't work, really doesn't matter. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? See, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts. All right, I hope that this is working. It was popping up some type of weird error. Let me make sure. Audio, audio. Yep, okay, you guys should be able to hear me just fine. I don't know. Man, hey, thanks for bearing with me this week. Uh, today is Wednesday. That's right, Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. What's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it will ever be. Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. And uh, something we've been doing here this week. So I've been testing out this new software. Uh, you can't tag anybody. Why, Emily? Why would you not be able to tag anybody? That makes no sense. Facebook is so weird. So something I've been testing out here um, this week is this StreamYard software. StreamYard software allows me to actually go live from my second office, which is down here in the basement in my house uh, versus my main studio. And so I thought this morning I would be in the main studio, but then I remembered I had to test a couple other things and I just ran those tests and it didn't work. <laughs> so thanks for bearing with me a little bit. Thanks for being my, um, I don't want to say, um, you know, guinea pigs, because you're not guinea pigs, but just thanks for sharing this experience with me as I learn and expand with new technology, right? So we're going to get things rocking and rolling this morning. Don't know why I won't let you guys tag anybody. Don't know why. Hopefully it'll still let you share. You know, Facebook is just stinking weird when it comes to our show. I think they get mad because we show up every single day. And we have so many comments and so many likes and so many shares. I think they just like, get mad, it like freaks their algorithm out. But we'll dive in, we'll have an amazing show here today on Hashtag Rising. Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to seven, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and run. All right, cool. So check it out. We're going to go one more round down here. Dude, I'm so amazed by technology and how it continues to evolve and how it continues to allow us to expand ultimately uh, what's possible for us to be able to connect and just do things. It's, it's, it's truly amazing. And so we're going to dive in. Um, this week thinking about expansion, talking about expansion. There's this book called 10X that was written by Grant Cardone. And this book, um, 10X, talking about 10Xing your life, right? 10Xing your life. And it's this overall understanding that success in whole is your duty, your obligation, and your responsibility right? Taking success and turning it into an ethical 
issue, that it's not just something that you should strive for or something that you should want in your life, but ultimately an ethical issue, a responsibility, a duty, an obligation that you have to be successful so that you can ultimately go out there and make an impact in other people's lives. That's what it's all about, right? This light's driving me crazy. I gotta turn it up. There we go. Is the impact we can make in other people's lives. And that's what 10X is. It takes, it's this theory, this concept that if you'll take your normal goals, multiply them by 10, and now determine the activity levels that are required for you to reach that new multiplied goal, that your activity levels go through the roof. And even if you come up a little short on the goal, let's say you get your goal is, 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 a million dollars a year, right? Your goal was a hundred thousand. Now you make that goal a million dollars a year. You do the activity levels. Even if you come up short, let's say you only get to 300,000 a year. That's still 200,000 higher than you would have if you hit your original 1X goal. So that's kind of the theory and the mindset behind 10X is we take our goals, we multiply them by 10, we figure out the activity levels required in order to get to um, that massive level of success, and then we're able to propel our lives forward with success being our duty, our obligation, and responsibility. So we've been talking about that this week. I'm going to give you six key points from the book here in just a second. I'll give you six key points. Hopefully, I'll get through them all. Yesterday, I had five, and I only got through four because sometimes I like to do a lot of this when uh, I should probably shorten it down just a little bit because the show only lasts so long. I gotta admit that little shot with me, like with my jacket there at the end, um, you know, kind of, I kind of like that shot. Just saying, kind of like that shot, dude. So this new software, it's kind of cool. It's called Streamyard that I'm using. It works great when I'm traveling. Seems to be working pretty well from the house. I'm able to hold a signal the entire time, which I wasn't able to do um, before. So really, really neat. It also lets me put your comments up here on the show, like Terry LaPierre, who's saying good morning to Mr. Archie this morning, and Mike Stevens, who's saying good morning to uh, everybody. Good morning to the tribe here, Don Sankey, Eric Willeroy, Jeff Baker, Jesse Miller, Josh O, right? Super, super cool. Um, let's see, Gail B. Craft, looks like she's in here this morning. She's saying good morning to Tracy Shepard, Aaron Sheeks. I love how you guys say good morning you know, to one another, not just to me, um, but to everyone else whose Facebook shut down. See, Emily's on here. I got to say thank you to Emily. Emily just dropped a thousand stars up here. Our, uh, yeah, a thousand stars uh, right here on hashtag Rise and Growing. For those of you that don't know, we take those stars that you guys donate and we take 50% of those. We take them out into the community and we use that money to go out and make an impact, um, to surprise, to bless uh, people here locally in the community. Uh, it's really a fun thing. Sometimes we go out and support the local police with catering. Sometimes we go downtown and hug homeless people and hand out gift cards, all of those different things that we do. So thank you, Kim Fair. Just dropped some more um, stars there also, which is awesome. What's up, Nathaniel Greklek? Great to have you here this morning, sir. I love that I can pop the comments up here. Super cool. Liza Myers, she's in here this morning. Liza Myers, gorgeous, my dear friend. And she says, good morning to my friend. Mr. Don Sankey, Corey Rains is up in here this morning, as well as John Coltenborn saying good, good morning to the whole crew. So I still haven't figured out how I can get music behind me as a layer. 
if I could figure that out, then we could actually do the segment, you know, where we dance and we do all that good stuff and we can't, you know, so on and so forth. But I can't figure out. Um, I, I looked a bunch of stuff up. I can't figure out here on StreamYard how to do that. So instead, I'm just saying good morning to each of you. Um, good morning, Emily. Sarah can still get Messenger messages. So if she can't get in the show this morning, make sure you blow her up on Messenger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah is who you're talking about. So Sarah made a post, was sharing posts about supposed real, not real doctors, whatever. We're not even going down that hole lane. And she's getting like banned and blocked on Facebook um, because she was sharing those types of videos. So, and uh, that's kind of what happens nowadays when you share that kind of stuff. Crazy, right? All right. So we've been talking about this idea of 10X your life, 10X success, 10X your relationships, 10X your spirituality, 10X, right? Good morning, Valerie, right? 10X, 10X, 10X. You're like, Glenn, okay, 10X, I get it, 10 times. I got to go 10 times what I thought I was doing before. Yes. So let's talk about this, right? Let's break this down. Success is your duty, your obligation, your responsibility. Now, also in this book, 10X, written by Mr. Grant Cardone, that I believe is a good book, well worth the read. It's got some massive, massive uh, value, lots of things that you can learn from the book. One of the points that he talks about is that you are not a victim. So, Emily, if you're taking notes, this is where we're going to start. You are not a victim. All right. I need you to really absorb, understand, and process this very powerful, life-changing sentence. Now, for me, I got an understanding of this concept of the fact that I am not a victim. Me personally, I got a grasp of this concept just after I spent this season of my life super depressed and a season of my life uh, where I wanted to kill myself and attempted to do so. Right after that season, I learned this idea and this concept that you are not a victim. And in doing so, it completely changed my life. So what Grant talks about, um, what Grant talks about in this particular portion of the book and I really want you to write this down and I really want you to absorb this. He says, anyone that uses blame as an excuse furthers their status as a slave. I want you to write that down. I want you to really think about that. Anyone that uses blame as an excuse furthers their status as a a slave. Now, I'm going to use a, a recent example for me. All right, this is a recent example. I won't show the other picture because it's gross and it's early in the morning. But Meredith just two nights ago uh, was in the emergency room. You know, she busted her lip on her bicycle, so on and so forth. This is her and my beautiful wife. Um, they're in the bed. And so when Meredith got hurt, and I was talking to Liza and Danelle about this yesterday, when when Meredith got hurt. My brain has been programmed to this. I am not a victim mentality that bad things don't happen to me or in my life. So I programmed. So my brain was immediately went to, OK, this I'm going to take responsibility for this action. She wasn't wearing a helmet. Would, have, would her of wearing a helmet had protected her face? The air in the tire on her bike was a little bit low. Could I have? aired up her tire before I sent her out. Maybe she needed a little bit bigger bike. Maybe this bike that she's on was a little bit too small for her. I should have gotten her a bigger bike, right? Instantly, she was the one who had the accident. I wasn't anywhere around. I was nowhere around. I was at the house. They were down the street coming back from the neighbor house. I wasn't there to witness it. I wasn't there to participate in it. But yet my mind immediately went to the things that I could have done to change that particular circumstance because I do not believe I'm a victim where that things happen to me, but things happen through me and never anyone else. It's never anyone else's responsibility, blame or fault for the things that go on that impact my life. The reason that I made this shift 
and this full on understanding and I take on these full on responsibilities is I realize that if I can control the bad in my life, guess what? I can also control the good. If I can take responsibility for the bad in my life, then I can also take responsibility for the good. You see, Grant, in this particular uh, portion of the book, he uses an example. If you're sitting at a stoplight and you get rear-ended, you get rear-ended. You're sitting at the stoplight, not moving. Somebody rear-ends you. Whose fault is it? Well, you immediately go into, well, it's their fault. They weren't paying attention. They were texting on their phone. They were doing whatever. We point the blame game. But let's go back to this powerful, powerful, powerful sentence. Anyone that uses blame as an excuse furthers their status as a slave. By admitting blame, by blaming someone else, you are saying to yourself, that you are not in control of your destiny and in your life. I take that same circumstance. I get rear-ended. My thought process is, dang, I should have left the house a minute earlier. Dang, I should have created an environment where people come to me instead of me going to people. Dang, if I would have chose today to go on a different path, than I normally go on so that I can mix things up so that I can experience something new versus staying comfortable and normal and mundane and routine, this would have never happened. If I would have been more alert and paying attention to my rear view mirror instead of looking at my phone while I was at the stoplight, maybe I could have avoided it. Do you understand the difference of a victim mentality versus taking control of your life? You have the opportunity to take control. You are not a victim. And every time you allow blame into your life, you are continuing to, to perpetuate your status as a slave. Woo! How about that one? Who likes that one this morning? <laughs> Strong number two this morning. From the book 10X with Grant Cardone, he talks about there are four levels of activity Four levels of activity, super important that you understand these four levels of activity and the ultimate results that you're going to get from them. We should all, what does that say there, Valerie? We should all cover over ourselves with a victim mentality. I don't know if I'm necessarily reading that right, but I think what you're saying is no victim mentalities allowed. Vicki ever says, I've had that happen. I was thankful it wasn't worse and I didn't get hurt back. Yes, you should be thankful that it wasn't worse and that you shouldn't did that it didn't get hurt bad. And also, at some point, we got to take responsibility. Now, I know that that sounds crazy. You're like, Glenn, I'm just sitting there at the light, dude. Bad things do happen. Look, I understand bad things do happen to good people all of the time. But it's this mindset of shifting responsibility, taking away, never allowing anyone else, never allowing blame into your life. Instead, taking responsibility super important. Four levels of activity. Level one, no activity. You do nothing. You just lay there. You don't take action. Number two, you retreat. Okay, so a lot of times when there's an opportunity that's proposed, Hello? Why did I lose my mic? Hello? Mike, Mike, Mike. Is it there now? Okay, you guys back? Uh, that's interesting. Okay, we're back. Okay, there you are. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, what's up, Darian? Thanks, buddy. That was that was interesting. So four levels of activity. Level one, no activity. You do nothing. Opportunity shows up. You're like, nope, I'm out. Level two. Can you can, can hear you now? Okay. Level two is retreat. This is a level of activity, right? So opportunity presents itself and you run the other direction. You're like, nope, not interested, not gonna do it. You back out, you go the other way, right? Good morning, by the way, Darian. Great to see you. Tony, good morning. Yes, I love that. 
right? The third level of activity is an average level of activity. An average level of activity is we do enough, right? This is what most people fall into. Most people fall into this area of average activity. So we do just enough at work to not get fired, right? That would be an average level of activity. We do, we make just enough money to be able to pay our bills, right? That would be an average level of activity, right? We do just enough in our relationships to not get divorced. That would be an average level of activity. Make sense, right? So these are, these are three of the four levels of activity. Activity level one, do nothing, nothing at all. Activity level two, retreat, run, right? Activity level three, Average enough, average amount of activity, just enough to get by. And then there's activity level four. And activity level four is massive action. Massive, ridiculous, crazy, insane levels of action. Now, the first three activity levels, you have to understand that the first three activity levels will not net you success. They will not. Doing nothing will not net you success. Retreating will not net you success. And doing average just enough will not net you success. There's only one activity level that will net you success, and that's massive, massive, massive levels of, act of action. You've got to take action, my friends. That's what it takes to be successful. That's what it takes to 10x your life is the actions that you do daily. They matter. They're so incredibly important. And so when I'm working with dealers, I work with a lot of different dealers across the country. And if we're having a hard time achieving a goal, we're having a hard time hitting a target, we've got to look at our actions, right? What do our daily activity levels look like? What do our outputs look like? If we start to output more, right? If our outputs are more on a massive level, more than anybody else, not average, not just enough, but more, then we can start to break through and our inputs actually are a net result of our outputs. The more activity we put out, the more that we get back. Now, here's the thing. All four of these stages take energy from you. All of them. Doing nothing actually takes energy, right? Doesn't sound like it does, but it actually takes energy to do nothing. In order to do nothing, we have to make a decision, right? We have to decide, okay, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything about this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and continue to, to play small. Uh, I'm not going to take action whatsoever. And then we have to start making the excuses to why we're not successful. So it still takes action. Even doing nothing takes action on your part, right? Retreating, running the other way, that takes energy takes energy in order to retreat, to go the other way. To do average still takes energy. So what Grant's talking about in this book is if we're gonna expend energy anyway, let's expend it on something productive, which is massive levels of action. It's the only way to be successful. Number three, there's no way we're getting through six today, but that's okay, we'll get through them all at some point. Number three, average is a failing formula. Write this down. Average is a failing formula. 80% of the population falls into average, which is what you consider your middle class. 15, actually 17% of the population falls into below that, below average, right? Which is the uh, um, um, poverty levels, those types of things. I hate the words lower class, but like poverty levels, right? And then you have... Uh, about 3% overall that fall into that above average, right? When it comes to success, uh, uh, financial success here in the United States of America. Then of course you have your one percenters and then one percent of the one percenters, so on and so forth. So 80% of people fall into this area of average, this area of middle class. Now here's why that is a failing formula. And you all know this because you see it, right? This is a failing formula because ultimately the way it's set up is you go to school till you're 18, you get a job, right? You work, you stay at that job, making uh, enough to pay your bills, maybe enough to save a little, 
right? You work your tail off, right? You work your bones into brittle. You work your hands into mush. You work until you are 65 years old. And then when you're 65, you get a little retirement and you're able to supposedly sit back and relax as you're living off of social security and a little bit of retirement, but you can't really go anywhere. You're stuck on a budget. You can't like travel, see the world. You can't do any of the big things that you really, you know, those big dreams that you had in your life, those uh, big, massive dreams that we talked about yesterday. You're not able to really go do any of those things. You're still a slave to your bank account and you're still controlled the rest of your life until you die. That's the core. That's the that's the current model that most people are seeking. Can you believe it? Average is a failing formula. Average is called average because it's safe. I want to give you an example of somebody who broke out of average in our industry. So in the car industry, you have the big three, right? You have Ford, you have um, Chevrolet, and then you have Chrysler, right? Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. So those are like the big three in the auto world from the domestic side. They've been around for, oh, I don't know, I think a little over 100 years right? hundred years doing things a certain way, a certain standard of average. Well, up pops Elon Musk in this, this guy right here, this is called the Tesla. So Elon Musk comes out in 2012, eight years ago, he comes out with the Tesla. Now this guy understands taking massive levels of action, right? He's just all go, go, go. You want to build a you know, he smokes some weed with Joe Rogan. He's like, you want to build a rocket to the, you know, to the moon? Let's do it. Take action. Right. He's just massive levels of action. So in doing so in massive levels of action in just eight years, he's managed to take Tesla to now the most valuable car company in the world. They're coming in at a worth of like seventy six billion dollars. In eight years, he's been able to become the most valuable car company in the world, more valuable than the big three that have been around for over a hundred years. How did he do it? Massive, massive levels of action. Go, go, do it. Yes, come on. Yep, uh huh. Try it, test it, tweak it, max it out. Yep, advertising, push it. We are, we, he doesn't even push advertising, he does it very unique, right? He's like, okay, if we, we want to advertise in a way that we want everyone to know that we exist. So how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to unveil a, a, a spaceship type truck that never nobody's ever seen before. And we'll unveil it in such a way that people will share it like crazy. And everybody in the world will find out about it. We're going to let people buy cars for a hundred dollar deposit. You put a hundred dollars down if you want one, and then we'll build it specifically for you. You can't even go into a dealership and buy one off the lot. You have to order. You have to go through a completely different process, right? And in doing so, with massive levels of action in eight years, he took down, not took down the big three, but has surpassed the big three in automotive in just eight years with massive levels of action. Listen. Success is your obligation, your responsibility, and your duty. I need you to understand that. You are not a victim, period. Everything that happens in your life, you have influence and choice over. Understand that. There are four levels of activity. Doing nothing, retreating, doing just enough, and massive levels of action. And the last message that I want you to walk away with today, the last key component that I need you to walk away with today is that average is a failing formula. It is not being average is not your ticket to fulfilling your wildest dreams. No, 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 no. Quite the opposite. Being average will keep you from living the life that you were designed for. You see, you are this child of God, the God of the universe, the God who made everything, made you to be the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Not an average version, not even a little bit above average or a little bit below, but the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. And the decisions you're making today, this is a long game, dude. 
This is a long game. This is not a short game. This is a long game. The decisions that you're making today, they matter. They start to stack up, making a good decision to wake up early, making a good decision to watch hashtag rise and grind. All of those things, they start to stack up. And as they stack up over time, it makes an impact on your friends, on your family members, on your coworkers. You showing up, hanging out here with me today makes an impact on me. And I, for one, absolutely love you for it. I do. Absolutely stinking love you. Sorry for a little technical difficulties today, doing some different tests. Thanks for bearing with me. Make sure you hit that share button so we can get this message out to the rest of the world. I greatly appreciate it. Have an amazing day. If you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. There. It's always weird going backwards. There, Glenn Lundy. Dot com. You can go there um, if you need more videos like this. And also come back here again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. I'd greatly appreciate it right here on hashtag rise and grind. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, I'm going to play this out and then look at some of you guys' comments. See ya. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? See, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts.